Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. So we're going to talk about social movements. Um, you guys are from very different movements. Yeah, I'd say. <laughs> um, different centuries, different ideas. But you are kind of the two most successful institutions that I can think of in terms of getting participation. So I want to start with the scouts. And I want, to, I want you to tell me a little bit about what the scouts of 2019 do that might be different than the scouts of 1919. Sure. Let me check first here. How many scouts are here? Any scouts in the room? Wow. Oh, a oh, good number. So scouting is, uh, as you know, is an informal education movement for young people. Started in 1907 and over the years, over 110 years, expanded to reach 170 countries. And today we have more than 54 million members around the world, making us, in fact, the largest youth organization led by young people. I joined Scouting as Secretary General two years and a half ago, and since then we have grown by, uh, grown by almost 4 million additional members we added to the movement, and we continue to expand horizontally and deepen our impact in societies. But what's really remarkable about Scouting that although it's managed by a world organization of the Scout movement, but it is a movement. And in fact, we are probably the only organization in the world that has the word organization and movement in its title. Because <laughs> usually you either go for this or that. So the whole theory of scouting for it to be a movement, today we have over 6 million volunteers who are delivering scouting on a voluntary basis every weekend and supporting young people. And I think in part of what, what's up to scouting today is that ability for us to embrace change, modernize our methods, continue to connect with the trends around us. And we're in the most difficult business in the world today, attracting the attention of young people, now, keeping them motivated. Now, speaking of uh, modern, uh, Wikimedia is not quite 100 years old, but I, th I do think people might be shocked to know how old it is. 20 years, right? Yeah, that's oh. almost 20, yeah. And so, to actually to throw the same question to you, wh what, what has changed in those 20 years? What's the biggest difference between then and now? Um, I think the biggest difference is that most around the world, people look at Wikipedia and they no longer think it's a crazy idea. People look at Wikipedia and I, I, same sort of thing. I'm going to ask, who in the room has used Wikipedia today? Any, <laughs> okay. wait, 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 any editors, any Wikipedia editors Have you ever made in the room? an edit to Wikipedia? Anyone? Awesome. We've Thank got you some guys. people who thought in the comment sections of the edits. Cool. Good. Has anyone made a donation to Wikipedia? All right, so you're all part of the Wikipedia movement because if you use Wikipedia to seek information, if you've contributed to our sustainability, and if you've edited our sites, you believe in the power of free knowledge, and that's what the movement's all about. I think the biggest thing that has changed is that not only have we grown from starting in English um, to now nearly, well, about 300 languages, uh, 50 million articles, where you were the about the fifth most popular website in the world, people trust Wikipedia and use Wikipedia as part of their daily lives. It's no longer a crazy idea that the world could build an encyclopedia for itself. It actually makes a lot of sense that the more people you have participating, the more accurate, representative, wide-ranging, and interesting the content's going to be. And so a question for both of you, which is when you're trying to build uh, or sustain a global movement, yeah. I think it's fair to say that the world is pretty polarized at the moment. Yeah. Are, what, what are some of the new challenges that you're both facing? And I think more importantly, how are you, how are you doing it? <laughs> because it's, it's, yeah. it seems harder than ever to actually do what you do. You know, it's interesting when it comes to social movements, uh, many people thought that social movements are an invention of the 20th century or before. And the 21st century, we have institutions. So you don't need to revolt. You don't need to mobilize people in a movement sitting. So if you need to, to be active, join a political party, a labor union, or an ungovernmental organization. If you see what's happening around us in the world today, there are re-emergence for social movements as a vehicle for bringing change in society. So it's no longer only about the civil rights movement that could bring big change. What I see today in Lebanon, Colombia, Algeria, you see in Chile, you see a number of countries where people are mobilizing themselves in a movement side today because they feel they are basically disconnected from the institutions, from structures. And what's dangerous today a little bit about like the re-emergence of movements, they re-emerge for one of two reasons in my view, either uh, anger or basically the, the ability for people to realize that we have an existential crisis today or existential threats similar to the environment one and the emergence of the movement led by Greta and the environmental basically activists in the world. Our job in scouting is to really uh, 
as basically a sustained movement to keep the organization very light. My job as Secretary General of the World Organization of the Scout Movement is to always keep that organization, the footnote and the movement, the headline, to make sure that all the time the movement is driving the, uh, the, the, the movement from the grassroots is really driving our, our governance. And, and with Wikimedia, what would you say is the largest uh, obstacle? Yeah, I think <laughs> the biggest obstacle for us is, I think, taking advantage of the opportunity that sits in front of us, which is, I know is like a really easy answer. I think there's two answers, right? One is that it's actually an increasingly scary place for information, and it's an increasingly scary place if you are somebody who wants to participate in a movement that is all about providing accurate, high-quality information, because the political pressures on people these days about what representing truthful information actually looks like in any number of countries around the globe are increasing tremendously. And so if you're somebody who's living in a country in which you say, oh man, Wikipedia is just an encyclopedia, then consider yourself lucky because you're living in a country with a tremendous amount of access to freedom of information, the expectation of freedom of inquiry, access to good education systems, and that's simply not the case in the majority of places. And unfortunately, those spaces for participation are closing. And so for us, it's how do we continue to do this work in an environment that has real challenges real physical challenges to many of the people in our movement. The second thing I would say is, you know, everyone's aware that about the next billion coming online, but this is really true. The majority of the internet has been built by people sitting in Europe and North America, and the majority of the world does not have that lived experience. By the end of this century, 40% of the world's population is going to live on the continent of Africa. What does it mean for the rest of the world to join an internet that wasn't built by them, and how do we actually prepare ourselves to change that to make a space that's more welcoming for everyone. So it's a challenge of opportunity and a challenge of immediacy. Yeah. What's, what's one, because I, I do think that these challenges are gigantic and they're complicated, right? But what are, what are, what's one like good concrete thing both of your organization's movements have done to address the next billion, to put a foot on the global south and actually kind of start building that gap? How, how are the scouts doing it? Actually, if, if you see what, uh, where we're expanding more today, we're expanding in the Asia Pacific and Africa, and a country like India, and I'm sure there are Indians here, you have 800 million young people under the age of 35. India alone has more young people than all of Africa, by the way, all the young people in Africa, and <laughs> Africa is growing. But if you see, we are, we're putting plan now for, for reaching 10 million young people in India to, to empower them through scouting. I think uh, the potential of living in a world today where half of the world's population under the age of 25 is enormous. Is it true what Kat is talking about in terms of having more nations, more societies uh, coming on board for the internet? Was even more true with having a very young world today that is really facing some, some bigger uh, challenges for us that we need to deal with, whether the question of uh, peace and security, the question of environmental, basically, uh, challenges. If you see here in some of the slides, we have uh, issued uh, biggest mobilization for the sustainable development goals. So Scouting committed that we will deliver 4 billion hours of service, community service to support the sustainable development goals, making it the world's largest contribution by young people for the sustainable development goals. And we're tracking that online. So this is a concrete area we're trying to not only contribute to an issue, but at the same time, bringing a, a movement that is 110 years old <laughs> and caring about the sustainable development goals. And as I keep repeating to my colleagues and our work, you know, when you have a movement of this, this many years, traditions are very important. Mm. So there are lots of traditions. I keep reminding my colleagues that we're not running a museum here. We have to engage with <laughs> issues and we have to listen to young people. So our success is largely defined for how much we'll be able to listen and engage young people directly and allow them the ability to lead. You will be surprised how underfunded, how challenged youth is structured in the world today. So don't be surprised when you see them joining political movements because there are few setups available to them at the national level and especially in the global south. Yeah, I mean, I would say for, for us, it's actually been how do we reinterpret our values for the next generation? So as I said, we started building an encyclopedia. We didn't start out to build a movement, and yet there is this power that comes with this idea that knowledge creates a better place for the world and that people want to participate in it. So what can we update around our values of openness and um, freedom to actually say, like, how do we make that more inclusive? How do we rethink whether we're here to build an encyclopedia or here to build the world's knowledge? And if we're here to build the world's knowledge, we have to invite the world in. 
And so we've really consciously reoriented to say, what can we do to break down systems of power and privilege that have excluded people from participating in knowledge historically, and how do we direct our resources to that? And that can be not just in the global south, but that can be economic inequality across the world. That can be access to opportunity across the world. I live in San Francisco. You know, what happens right across, across my home city to ensure that people are able to participate and their voices are represented? And I, I, I think this sort of applies to both of you, which is that, as I said, we are in polarizing times and we are in a world full of fairly bad actors, whether it's youth radicalization or it's the weaponization of information or, or the, 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 uh, the barring of it from, you know, access of it. Do you see a global movement as having a, um, an activist slant inherently to it. Do, do, you, do you see the Scouts as an activist organization? Do you see Wikimedia as an activist organization? So, one of our, the president of Wikimedia Chile, which is one of our global affiliates, like Scouts, we have places, uh, communities all over the world, said something that is really powerful to me, which is Wikipedia's knowledge is neutral, but the act of free knowledge is not. And I think that's very, that's accurate and powerful because what knowledge has been, over the centuries, knowledge has really been about power. Who has it? Who doesn't have it? How can I keep it? How can I build wealth off of it? How can I build empire off of it? And what Wikipedia is saying is that knowledge belongs to everyone. Everyone should be represented in it. It is a leveling tool. It is an opportunity for equity tool. And so, yeah, there's definitely an activist component to it. But we want to be activists in a way that is not partisan or political. We want to be activists on behalf of humanity. Now, I, I want to, I just noticed we've got some questions, so I want to throw to a few. So, um, I feel like this one could be interesting uh, to talk about a little bit. Um, Andrea asks, anger movements focus on teenagers from non-structured families to engage then in their cause. How do you protect children and teenagers uh, and stop them from falling into that trap? I guess that's probably more for the scouts. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really empowering them by enabling them to access good education, ability to access non-formal education. By the way, we are in the business of non-formal education. We believe in scouting. If you only go to a classroom, you will learn very little. I mean, a lot, you see a trend today in the formal education sector for adopting a non-formal education methods. And we have been saying that for, for many years, for you to really have a young citizen who's able to engage in a constantly changing world, you need to enable them with, with tools, how to think, not what to think, the ability to learn, unlearn, relearn again, and for them to get these ideas and to know how to engage. Uh, one of our biggest events, in fact, and you would be surprised in this setting to know that the scouting is also in the tech industry somehow. Our largest event online called Jyoti Jyoti, we engage over two million young people online over a weekend, and we, we engage them to talk about friendship, global citizenship, and we have invested significantly this year to enhance the cyber security element to that. So we're educating people how to engage in a safe environment also online. And by enabling them to use that in a safe environment, in a structured environment, you'll be able to, to really get them to, to uh, conduct themselves in a safe way. Uh, that's where the investment needs to be channeled. And if there's a message today I want to share, more investment in that type of non-formal education is needed today. This is, this is a fun one. Uh, this, is for, this is for Wikipedia. So uh, Charlotte asks, the guys sitting beside me just reflected they trusted Wikipedia less when realizing how many editors are in this room. Is the amount of editors a threat? Uh, no, I think the amount of editors is an asset. In fact, this this room is a little overrepresented for editors compared to most <laughs> it is rooms a I walk into. How many are in the room? Yeah, right now. that's unusual. So thank you again. Um, but what we have found, it's interesting that you say that, whoever you two guys are, uh, because what we found is that when people learn how Wikipedia works, when they don't know originally that it's like written by volunteers, they, they trust it. And then when they find out how it works, that it is written by volunteers, trust actually decreases until they learn how the process works. And then when they see their opportunity to participate in the process and affect change and hold it to account, trust not only increases, it surpasses the original trust. So I'm not surprised to hear that, but instead of thinking it as a negative, you should, what I always use is the example of open source software, which has an expression, Many eyes make all bugs shallow. The more that all of us are looking around with all of our diverse perspectives and experiences, the more likely we are to spot problems and fix things where we, where we see them to be broken. Yeah. This, is, this is a question for both of you from the audience. An anonymous person asked what you both see as uh, trends that should be watched out for in 2020. You know, what, what, what is the, the next year of global movements looking like? 
I, I see that uh, the reemergence of social movements continue to, to be on the rise. I see that uh, political institutions and structures that we know them, uh, they are also being challenged, as I said, whether movements are driven by anger or they are driven by basically uh, realization of people that if they were to act in climate change or uh, all these big issues and challenges facing us, institution will not serve us. So I think social movements will continue to be in the rise. But with that, that's not always a good news, by the way. Having social movements can also be, because anger can be basically mischaracterized by, by politicians and they can take advantage of that. Uh, so if, if people are not uh, aware enough that uh, uh, grievances could be translated to driving us further to the right or to could, could basically uh, come at a cost where people and their demands would not be honored by politicians, uh, that trend will continue. We have seen it over the past three to four years where people and their grievances and their, their calls for reform have been uh, abused, I would say, uh, by some politicians and that could, uh, could continue. Let me just comment on, on scouting and uh, being non-political because I agree with you that the question of neutrality is a big one for us. I think in scouting we arrived to a point where we're saying we're non-political but we're also not in neutral. Climate change doesn't require neutrality. When it comes to gender equality, we're not in neutral. What you know as Boy Scouts is now 95% of our member organization open for boys and girls. And the last, last one who joined is Saudi Arabia. We're pushing for these issues because I believe this is where we need to stand. Uh, if scouting to be relevant for the next 100 years, that's the stand we need to take. And Couldn't yeah. agree more on those on those two issues. Absolutely. Um, so you know, I think that for the next for 2020, what I'm looking at is is power, right? Movements are all about power. Who has it? Who doesn't? And what I think Ahmed was saying is completely right. Movements are most powerful when they center around the values that bring us together. And so for movements to be successful, it is about how do you hold core to those values and even when you're negotiating with power, because movements are successful when they get people to give power away, which is a very hard thing to do. How do you hold true to those values? I think that that is the core of what we should be looking at across the globe. This disruption that we're seeing, the decline in trust that we're seeing, the failure of institutions that we're seeing is because of the capture of power because movement or because institutions are not working for everyone. And so for me, keep an eye on power. I think that that's the really interesting question. I have one last question and it's a fun one and I feel like I have to ask it. What is your favorite Wikipedia article? Oh, okay. Uh, it is the overview effect. The overview effect is what astronauts see when they, or experience when they go up into oh, yeah. space. It's universal. Every astronaut that you talk to is a, a, has, has experienced it. It's the sense of how fragile the globe is and how few lines actually divide us. Because remember, all those borders on maps, those are not real. They're not real. This is one world we've got and it's a very empty outer experience out there, outer space, and we need to work together here for the one that we've got. Wow, that was very appropriate for the conversation. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> well, thank you guys very much, and thank you guys for watching.